Welcome to video 16 of the Search for a Better Health series. In this video, we're going to be looking at how uh, we can control and prevent diseases and how we've seen a shift um, to that rather than treatment and uh, rather than management and prevention. So when we talk about the strategies, we're going to talk today about public health programs, pesticides, and genetic engineering, the first of which is the public health programs. So the first of the public health programs um, which we look at are the government regulations that are in place that ensure that standardised procedures are in place and are followed for the, uh, this, these specific industries. So the first is for the handling, cooking, and storing of food. There's regulations for sterilizing equipment and when health workers move from patient to patient in hospitals, surgeries and clinics, uh, for disposing correctly of garbage and for the effective treatment of drinking water. There are laws that require medical professionals uh, to report certain diseases once they are detected and some of those are measles, meningococcal and whooping cough. Uh, we know that there are regular screening for certain diseases, sometimes subsidised by the government, and you might see them around your local area or advertised on the television, and three of those include breast cancer, pap tests, and prostate cancer. And then we also have the Childhood Immunisation Program, which is Australia-wide, uh, but we have our own version here in New South Wales. Falling under public health programs are public education programs, and these are aimed at increasing the public's awareness of the factors associated with lifestyle diseases. And so they aim to change people's lifestyles in order to prevent a certain diseases from occurring. I've got three examples written here. The first is the QUIT program run uh, to raise awareness of the effects of smoking. The second is the Slip Slap Slap campaign uh, for skin cancer run by Cancer Council. And then there's the Life Be In It um, advertisements which aim to increase the physical activity levels of people, helping to reduce obesity and other lifestyle associated diseases. Uh, so I've included two videos here which you can play your own leisure from Google Classroom. And the first is the Cancer Council, the sponge ad, um, which aims to stop people from smoking. And the second is the original Slip Slop Slap ad run by the Cancer Council and anti-cancer um, organisations. The second is pesticides, and pesticides is the word used to um, encompass any chemicals that are used to kill the pests of plants and animals, pathogens, and any vectors that transmit pathogens from one organism to another. Uh, if pests and vectors are killed using these pesticides, then uh, we are in fact preventing the occurrence of diseases, and therefore the spread of disease through the population will be controlled. I've included three examples here. The first is the use of DDT uh, to kill lice, which carry the typhus uh, pathogen, and this was in World War II. Uh, there's the use of DDT to kill mosquitoes, which carry malaria. And then there's the use of pesticides to uh, kill aphids, which are the vectors which transfer the potato leaf roll virus in plants. So the problem with using pesticides is that uh, plants can develop resistance um, and then also they also sometimes have damaging effects on the environment. And the third and final strategy is genetic engineering and this is the process that involves altering the genetic composition of an organism in some way. Uh, and specifically we're talking about the use of genetic engineering to make uh, organisms resistant to diseases. And the example which I've got here is BT cotton, which we've discussed previously, but it's the incorporation of a section of DNA from a bacterium into the cotton plant, which can produce a natural insecticide. And this kills insect pests that feed on plant tissue. By using genetic engineering, we are in fact preventing the occurrence of diseases in organism and therefore controlling the spread of disease through a population. Uh, by being able to do this, the incidence of these diseases and pests has been able to reduce dramatically. Uh, we still do have problems associated with genetic engineering, and that is the ethical use of genetic engineering and also the reduction in natural biodiversity in ecosystems. So where to from here? What are our implications for the future? So there have been some really good success stories for the use of uh, some of these strategies. And we've seen the eradication of smallpox and the decline of some common human diseases uh, through the use of vaccination programs. Where some areas have been disasters, so the spread of cinnamon fungus in Australian ecosystems is just one. Um, the genetic engineering techniques 
that they hold the promise of increasing resistance of host to pathogens. So if we keep using these and keep trying to understand the process better, um, there is a chance that uh, we'll be able to increase resistance of hosts to pathogens. Uh, we know that some controls work well for the time, but then their effectiveness declines. And that might be because um, they've created a tolerance or a resistance. Uh, we've seen them kind of naturally evolve to be resistant to some of these um, programs. So without any continued research um, and looking at new chemicals, new ways to prevent resistance, um, pathogens will continue to spread their diseases. So thank you for watching video 16, the final video of the Search for a Better Health series. Uh, make sure you tune in for our genetics options and good luck with your trial exams.